least the sound bites are working this time, ladies and gents. That's all I'm thankful for currently. Happy hump day, or if you listen to this on a Thursday morning, happy day past hump day, one day before Friday. It has been decided. This is the 10 Minute Sports Report. I am your host, Captain Boring. Go, don't forget to go check out an all new episode episode of the fourth and one podcast live friday we get into the big daddy of them all the sec we make some cold bold predictions i do i'm, I'm just throwing things out the window i don't want to talk too long because my sound bites will eventually stop working as y'all are aware so let's just get right into it this is your 10 minute sports report for wednesday july 26th 2023 Justin Herbert, the young quarterback for the Los Angeles Chargers, has signed a five-year, $262.5 million contract. Not sure if he's going to be able to live on that, ladies and gentlemen. It'll make him the highest-paid player in NFL history. That's just how this works. Quarterbacks just constantly top each other. Joe Burrow will make him next. Lamar Jackson, or Jalen Hurts, was the highest-paid quarterback for 10 days, and then it was Lamar Jackson for 89 days, and now it's Justin Herbert, and then we'll just wait for Joe Scheiste. Uh, contract to get done and then it'll be him until the next quarterback rolls around the deal includes 133 million dollar guaranteed with a no trade clause it is the richest contract that the chargers have given out in their 64 year history the 133 million dollars can become 218 million dollars if certain incentives are met along the way so justin herbert got to get them to the play back to the playoffs and actually got to win a playoff game this time around jump on over to some college football news colorado their board of directors is discussing a plan to move back to the big 12 they went from the big 12 to the pac 12 Oh, maybe 15 years ago now. So this would move would be back. That would put the Big 12 in or in a great place because they just signed a TV deal. However, it would put a pack, the Pac-12 in a precarious situation. Still don't have a TV contract yet. Um, it has been reported they're going to go with streaming services. However, nothing has been announced. So lots of things up in the air for the Pac-12 still. Go check out. The podcast at uh, Fourth and One Podcast, Spotify, and wherever you get your podcast to get all your college football information. And just oh nope, they're still working. All righty, the Buckeyes, Ohio State Buckeyes, still do not have a starting quarterback. It was Kyle McCord's job to lose. At the last I heard, at the end of spring, now it's fall camp. And Ryan Day says, no, the starting quarterback job is still up in the air. So we are going to see how that plays out. The strongest part of Ohio State's run over the last five to seven years has been their steady and consistent quarterback play and knowing who's been the quarterback heading into the season. Right now, we don't know who that's going to be. So that is definitely a change. The Buckeyes right now are the underdog in the Big Ten Conference. The Michigan Wolverines are the top dog. However, the top dog might be without their leader of the pack, Jim Harbaugh, for four games. The NCAA and the University of Michigan are working together to resolve and put an end to the investigation in which alleged Jim Harbaugh bought a recruit a hamburger during the recruiting dead period. I don't think that's what's aggravating the NCAA because the NCAA has no morals, i.e. go take a look at what they did for Penn State, reversing that all, all these years later. That's not their problem. The problem is that Jim Harbaugh won't admit to it. Jim Harbaugh has held the line of, I don't remember, I don't remember, I don't remember. And that aggravates the NCAA because they're used to just everyone just being like, yeah, I did that. And then, and then they look the other way. They can't even look the other way because Harbaugh won't let them. And should they? Yes. Is buying a recruit a cheeseburger against the rules? Yes. Is it a four-game suspension worth? Absolutely not. Let's check in on the lowest salary teams in baseball. And let's start in the NL Central this time with our favorite 
Cincinnati Reds. So the Cincinnati Reds came off of a three-game sweep of the Arizona Diamondbacks, then lost to the Milwaukee Brewers 3-2, to then beat the Milwaukee Brewers 4-3, to and then lost to them 3 to nothing. They sit one and a half games back of the Milwaukee Brewers for first place. So this series really could have, they could have taken over first place in the NL Central, but they didn't. They still sit uh, what is that? Eight games over 500 and one and a half back of the Brewers and still in the wild card hunt. So as of today, they would probably make the playoffs, but still a lot of baseball left to be played. Trade deadline is also coming up. Will they make a move for some starting pitching? Stay tuned for future episodes. Let's go take a look at the ALEs. The Tampa Bay Rays have been having a rough month. Out of the last one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, they have won two games. They are two and eight in their last ten games. They are currently on a one-game losing streak. They lost. They beat the Miami Marlins four to one, and then lost to the Miami Marlins seven to one, which gives the Baltimore Orioles, who are on a one-game. St- skid but this coming off of a three game winning streak for a first place by a good two games over the Tampa Bay Rays so the best team in baseball in the first half is now in second place behind the hottest team in baseball the Baltimore Orioles let's check in around the standings so the Baltimore Orioles lead the American League East followed by the Minnesota Twins in the Central followed by the Texas Rangers out West however the Houston Astros are also hot the Houston Astros are seven and three in their last 10 games and on a three game winning streak and has closed that gap to one game the Los Angeles Angels are also seven and three in their last 10 and sit six and a half back and that's important because they have a decision to make do they trade Shohei Otani the best player in all of baseball probably in all of baseball history with what he does both on the mound and at the plate or do they try to make the playoffs not make the playoffs and then lose him to free agency so there's a a real decision to be made lol The best team in baseball record-wise, however, it's only by like a game and a half now. The Atlanta Braves are on a two or are on a one-game losing streak and four and six in their last ten. They lead the National League East. The Brewers lead the National League Central over the Reds by a game and a half. And the Los Angeles Dodgers, four and six in the last ten, have a four-game lead on the Arizona Diamondbacks in the National League West. The wild card standings, the Rays, the Astros, and the Toronto Blue Jays lead the wild card. However, the Boston Red Sox, the hottest team since June 30th, who are on a three-game winning streak and six and four in their last 10, sit just one and a half games back now of the Toronto Blue Jays for that third and final wild card spot. And if you do, and if you don't know baseball history, do not let the Red Sox make the postseason because they always find a way to make it deep into the playoffs. I'm talking the uh, championship series or even the World Series. Out in the National League, you got three teams all tied for first place. You have the Arizona Diamondbacks. NL West, the San Francisco Giants, NL West, and then finally the Cincinnati Reds, NL Central. The Philadelphia Phillies and Miami Marlins both sit half game back of all three of those teams. It's going to be super fun down the stretch, ladies and gentlemen. I haven't followed this I haven't followed this much baseball this closely for quite some time. So I'm kind of all invested in for these 10 minute sports reports. So they do good for me just as they do good for you. That was great English. Let's finish up. Tune in Friday for an all new rendition of the Fourth and One podcast. I thank you every I thank you everyone. Wow. I thank everyone so much for listening. I have been your host Captain Boring. Until Friday, wash your hands, you filthy animals. God bless you all and peace out. Hey.